Hi, this is Janie Helms here to do my respiration presentation, and I'm going to cover Boyle's Law and how that relates to ventilation. So throughout the whole presentation, I'm first going to cover what Boyle's Law is, and it's going to, we're going to talk about a graph, talk about how and what how Boyle's Law represents, and then how that relates to the ventilation, meaning how we breathe, our respiratory system. And I'm going to connect that to scuba diving. So Boyle's Law, what it says is that if I have, now this, whether I have a substance, whether liquid or gas, if it is in a container, the relationship between the pressure that is exerted and the volume of the container, they have an inverse relationship. And this is applied when temperature is not a factor. So I am going to assume that in this container, whether an actual enclosed container, I could also use it connecting it to the diving that I'll discuss later. Um, a body of water could be my container. So in a container, if my temperature does not change, volume and pressure have an opposite effect. So for example, I'm actually going to start with container B in my image here. So in container B, I have this container with a, a piston that is going to squeeze in the liquid. It is going to affect the volume. I still have the molecules in there, but the piston is going to show that if I reduce that volume or increase it, what will happen? So in the center container, we're going to say that volume and pressure are equal. They are both at one. If I were to come over here to container A, I have reduced my volume. Specifically, it was cut in half. So if I have half as much room with the same amount of molecules moving at the same speed, meaning same temperature, all those mar uh, molecules are trying to get somewhere. So the volume was cut in half, but now the pressure inside of it has doubled. If I move over here to container C, I create more volume. So from my container B to container C, my volume doubled. I added full extra amount of volume, so it went up to two. Well, that means all my little particles have twice as much room to bump around in and move everywhere in the container. So I have released pressure. There is more room for them to move, so they're not as stressed. They can go where they want. So pressure has been cut in half. So Boyle's Law, if temperature is not a factor, if pressure increases, that means volume had to decrease and vice versa. Now, relating that to us breathing, when we breathe, when we talk about ventilation, we're talking about how deeply I'm going to breathe and my rate, meaning how quickly. Is it quick or is it slowly? So depth and rate of breathing. When you breathe in, we call that inspiration. Okay, I'm breathing inwards. Now, when you breathe inwards, if your lungs are um, compliant, if they um, are stretchy how they should, they function how they should, when you breathe in, the muscles around our rib cages, the muscle around our body or the diaphragm under the lungs, they're going to contract, but they're not going to contract in a way that makes them smaller. Those muscles actually contract up and outward. So it's almost like they, it seems in our mind that they expand. So when we breathe in, it's like our chest cavity opens up, which allows air to come in. When we breathe out, it's called expiration, like exit, exit out. When you breathe out, the opposite occurs. The muscles relax and air leaves our body. So 
to put an image to it, here is normal, I'm sitting here, maybe I'm not breathing for the moment. Um, when we relate pressure inside of our body, we relate it to the atmospheric pressure um, or the barometric, barometric pressure. So barometric pressure at sea level is 760. So inside our lungs at that same time, since it has access to it, is also 760. And there's many laws that help explain this. There's um, laws about thermodynamics and how heat goes from higher concentrations to lower concentrations. The same thing goes for air, movement of air, or liquids and gases, any kind of, um, pretty much any kind of material. The law says that everything wants to move naturally from an area of higher to an area of lower. So before I am actually breathing in, inside my lungs and outside my lungs are the same amount of pressure. But as soon as I breathe in, the size of my chest cavity, the size of my thorax, it contracts and they become bigger. If there is more room, we just talked about, according to Boyle's law, the more room or volume there is, the less pressure. So my pressure could go down to 759. Because of that, that allows that air from the outside of my body to move in because it wants to reach equilibrium. Okay, your body and nature naturally wants things to be level. So the air from the outside is going to move in and that's how I fill my lungs. So again, when I breathe in, that's my contraction of my muscles moving up and out, meaning spreading my chest out, expanding it so that I can fill it with air. Now, when I breathe out, I expire, I go through expiration, I'm decreasing the size of my lungs. So that means I'm putting more, I'm increasing the pressure. I have all that air in my lungs, but now their volume is smaller. And according to Boyle's law, if I have that air in a container like my lungs and I reduce the volume that it can be in, pressure is going to increase. So here it's gone up to 761. Because of that and because equilibrium wants to be reached, it moves out of my body back to the atmosphere to balance things out. Now, let's relate this to scuba diving. Why is this so important? Because I don't even have to work to breathe in and breathe out. My body does its job, but it's not much of a task for someone with healthy lungs. So how can we take Boyle's Law and breathing that we do naturally and apply it to something? So over the years, we have done, there's been many experiments, but and we've used Boyle's Law for many different things, but diving is probably at the top of the list why that breathing is so important. You need to know why and when your lungs expand and contract, um, or I should say expand and then collapse or shrink, and you want to make sure that you don't cause the wrong thing to happen the, with the way you're breathing. So... In an experiment, we always have a kind of a closed system. So you have your um, containers with me controlling the volume and the pressure and all that kind of stuff. Um, but in the water, the water itself, I can't control the volume around my body. So the way water works we said that pressure at sea level is 760, but every time you dive deeper underwater, you are building up pressure. Those water molecules are getting closer and closer and squish more together. So the rule is that they say that the rule is when you're diving, as you're going down, you're supposed to breathe in, and as you ascend back to the surface, you're supposed to breathe out. 
You're never supposed to hold your breath um, when you're diving. You need to keep that constant breathe in, breathe out, go through that ventilation process. So people who have studied Boyle's Law, um, Boyle himself, making and developing and proving his law, this law, they have this, um, this image that kind of breaks it down as to what happens with volume, what happens to pressure, and specifically where that pressure can be seen diving in the depths of water. So at the surface, they consider it even, they say, one. Okay, um, We're going to say at one bar, we are at the surface of the water, pressure and volume, everything is even, perfectly fine. But as soon as I dive down, they say that we reach a second level or that our pressure has doubled by the time we get down 33 feet or 10 meters. So as soon as I'm down 10 meters in the water, I've already doubled the pressure on my lungs. So when you, you're already building pressure on your lungs. So you want to try and counteract that with the way that you breathe. So this table shows double the pressure, I have half the volume, three times the pressure, a third of my volume, and it breaks it down. So the reason for it, when they say you need to breathe out when you're ascending, coming back up once you've, do once you've dove down deep, so our lungs expand naturally breathing in. But we also know that as I'm rising up in depth, pressure's already being released. So if water is putting less pressure on my body as I'm coming up, and I am also reducing pressure on my lungs by um, breathing in, Doing both of those at the same time, I could be expanding my lungs so fast and too much that they can rupture. So the key is that when you are moving up and pressure is decreasing on your body because of the water, I want to do the opposite in my lungs. So if I breathe out, we said breathing out increases my pressure. So if I can increase my pressure while the water is decreasing, I can maintain that balance and not get ruptured lungs. Or another thing, people who work deep dive um, jobs or just diving for fun, um, whether it's a job or a um, hobby, you can get decompression sickness. So maybe your lung doesn't rupture, but um, other health issues could arise. <clears throat> okay, so again, understanding Boyle's Law and how that relates to ventilation, us breathing in and out ourselves, how that applies to scuba diving, Again, pressure, volume, depth, they are all related. Now, um, as well as talking about what could happen wrong with ruptured lungs or decompression sickness, another thing that goes with the scuba diving is that oxygen, the way you breathe. Um, different things, the rule is, and using the article that I found that talked about Boyle's Law, showed this diagram um, and how scuba diving should work. Through their research, they said two hours on the surface is the same as only 10 minutes at 100 meters of depth. So people who scuba dive, they have to think to themselves, how deep am I diving? How long am I going to stay down there? If there is no stress factors, major temperature changes, um, they have to make sure they have enough oxygen to be able to breathe because, again, you never want to hold your breath, especially ascending or descending through that water. 
So they need to realize, do they need twin tanks? Do they need to in increase the size of their oxygen tank fully? Do they need to bring extra tanks? Um, are they going to have to go back to the surface to get more tanks? They have to take all of this into effect. So back to up at the top again. Boyle's Law. If I look at this graph here, it shows here's my volume, here's my pressure. As volume goes down, pressure went wider. Okay? My, the way that these, you have to use Boyle's Law to be able to understand how your body works, but you have to use Boyle's Law and how our body works to be able to breathe in areas we're not naturally supposed to breathe. And there is my presentation.